I don't think he had any choice because that's all he could do. There was not another business that he could accomplish. He could like, well, I'm going to switch to being this now. You know, um, he was born to do cartoons. He ate, ate, slept, dreamt cartoons. He used to refuse to learn how to drive because he was so convinced that he would lose control of the car because he was thinking about a cartoon. He told me that. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, you can learn how to drive. <laughs> But he, he refused to drive for years, you know, because it was like absolutely convinced that his mind could only think like a cartoon. So I dug out my old uh, cartoon colors, and if you look closely, you can see how it's separated there. It just looks like gross muck. Um, if I would, I had to like remix them all. You see this horrible paint everywhere. I always was sloppy. Everybody made fun of me over at Spumco because I just put a piece of cardboard down and just started mixing paint. Never pre-mixed it, never had anything in any kind of order. That's just how I work. But these are, these are a product called Cartoon Color. And amazingly, they're still being manufactured. I don't know who they're selling them to, but what they were originally, probably for cells, special order cells for big shots because there's no more cells anymore. Everything's digital as we know. And they, but if you've got a product, a thing you want to put on the wall, you don't just want to do a printout, you still make a hand painted cell. They found when we were, they used to do all the cells for all the local productions. And somebody found out that the paint that they used, it's kind of a, kind of a liquid acrylic, was really good for painting cartoon backgrounds. So all during Ren and Stimpy, that's what we used to paint with. And the, the thing about the stuff is that it's great paint, but you have to almost, a friend of mine told, told a painter friend said, I said, how do you keep these things without them drying up and, and separating? They always separate. Uh, he said, I, I, I have a wine rack and I, I, I put them in like this for a, a couple of months, then I have my turning and I put them in like that. And I put, you know, over the years, that's what he does. So I still had a box full of these things because I still occasionally, occasionally hand paint with them. Any failures he had working for somebody else, like at, at Hanna-Barbera or wherever, were because he kept trying to turn their cartoon into something better and trying to make it into something that looked like he did it. He couldn't conform to something that had turned into a cookie cutter, kind of lousy product. We all wanted it to go back to the 40s or the early 60s in Hanna-Barbera's case to when it was good. And we they just wouldn't do it. They wouldn't change. They couldn't take their existing product and change it back to that. They thought that stuff was junk, and so he had to sell something new so he could do it. And sort of, in a way, it was like a, this whole period of time, nothing evolved any further. It devolved, and so we had all this catching up to do. And on this cartoon, we kind of brought everything back up to where it should have evolved to. I'm just putting up a few little finishing touches up it, uh, on it so we can uh, film this thing. And um, then I'm going to take advantage of uh, today's technology, scan it, put it in the computer, and um, just make it a little bit more 3D, a little bit more finished out, a little smoother, correct mistakes. Um, the thing about, I remember John was, he was, couldn't wait for digital. Um, we, the man's best friend was shot digitally. We still painted everything by hand, but after he lost the cartoon and went on to do his comic book, um, I noticed all the coloring was digitally done and to beautiful effect. So part of me was saying, well, if I'm gonna do it exactly like an old Ren and Stimpy cartoon, I just gotta completely hand paint it. And then I'm just like, no. I think that if we were doing Ren and Stimpy now, we would probably be doing it all digitally, but I would like to see it if we ever do anything again, which you know, there's a nice dream, uh, something like painting it by hand and then finishing it out, very much like what I'm describing right now. They were doing these little offbeat jobs, and I remember I did a game box cover painting from John's layout, and then Bob Camp did all these little paintings for the inside of the game. And it was always like, we're close to selling a cartoon. And I was just like, yeah, hope you do. 
<laughs> you know, and it used to be me being part of that saying, yeah, we're going to sell a cartoon, but I had just kind of been, kind of just said, they're just never going to open the gates for us. It's just not going to happen. But it did. <laughs>